Birth of the Muslim League The Muslim League was founded in 1906 under the leadership of Salimullah Khan and Aga Khan, the Nawab of Dhaka. The League grew due to the encouragement given by the British to the Muslims, so that Muslims could be won over, keeping in line with their policy of divide and rule. Another reason was the perception of some Muslim leaders that the Hindus were in majority would leave the Muslims out in the future governance of India. The League supported the partition of Bengal and demanded special reservation for the Muslims in the government service. It consisted of mostly the upper-class Muslims and its primary motive was to put a stop to the young Muslims from going over to Congress and thereby into the nationalist fold. The Muslim League, being a purely loyalist body, looked up to the government for favour and patronage. In the process, the British propaganda of dividing Bengal would help the Muslims led to the rise of communal violence and contributed to the rise of separatist tendencies. Surat Split Presiding over the Congress session of 1906, Dada Bhai accepted Swaraj as the goal of Congress. The moderates had serious differences with the radicals. Unlike the radicals, they did not accept Swadeshi and boycott as regular methods of agitation. Nor did they want these methods to be applied outside Bengal. The moderates and radicals parted ways at the Surat session of Congress. The British used this display of disunity to their advantage. They followed a two-pronged policy of appeasing the moderates by giving them concessions and deterring the radicals through repressive measures. Morley Minto Reforms The British tried to placate the moderates by passing the Indian Councils Act of 1909, also known as Morley Minto Reforms. The Act increased the number of elected members in the Imperial Legislative Council so that they were at par with the English. The number of members in the provincial councils were also increased. The Act also introduced separate electorates for the Muslims, which meant that there would be separate constituencies for the Hindus and Muslims. The Hindus could vote for only Hindu candidates. This was done in the name of protecting the Muslim minority. But in reality, this was a part of the British policy of divide and rule. Through this act, the British hoped to keep away the Muslims from the national movement, as it encouraged the communal divide between Hindus and Muslims. The moderates soon realised that the act did not provide adequate representation to the Indians in the legislature. Trivia the Congress and the Muslim League came together for the first time in 1916 session of the Congress at Lucknow. National Movement During World War I Two important declarations were made in Delhi Darbar held in 1911 when King George V and Queen Mary visited India. The first was that the capital of British India would be shifted from Calcutta to Delhi and the other was the revoking of the partition of Bengal. During the First World War, 1914-1918, to the Congress cooperated with the British war efforts. Huge number of Indian soldiers were sent overseas to fight for the British. This caused widespread economic distress because of severe scarcity of goods and a steep rise in prices. Some Indian businessmen and industrialists made huge profits through trading in war supplies. In 1915-1916, to Tilak and Annie Basanth organised the Home Rule League. The Home Rule League wanted self-government in India after the World War. Annie Basanth was arrested but was soon released due to public agitation condemning her arrest. The nationalist now fully realised that the British government was fully taking advantage of the disunity among them. The Lucknow session of Indian National Congress in 1916 was historic on two accounts. One, the moderates and radicals decided to come together and put up a united front. Two, the Congress and Muslim League sank their differences and fought against the government on a common platform, presenting common political demands before the government. Lokmanya Tilak played an important role in bringing the two groups together. The unity between moderates and radicals on one hand and 
the Congress and the Muslim League on the other, gave an added impetus to our national movement. Montague Shemsford reforms, 1919. To pacify the nationalists after the First World War, the government announced the Government of India Act of 1919, also known as Montague Shemsford reforms. The main provisions of this act were, one, the Legislative Council at the centre was made bicameral, having two houses, the Legislative Assembly and the Council of State. The majority of the members were now elected, however, the right to vote was not universal. It was given only to those who possessed property. 2. A system of government called diarchy was introduced in the provinces. The subjects of the provincial government were divided into two parts, the reserved and the transferred. Important subjects like finance and law and order were reserved subjects in the hands of the governor which he addressed with the help of the council. Whereas the transferred subjects like health and education were administered with the help of members from the legislature who were Indians. But their views and opinions could be overruled. The real subjects were the more important ones and hence the real powers were still in the hands of the British and not with the Indians. The act fell much below the expectations of the people. The Indians were not at all satisfied and their disillusionment led to the protest movements all over the country. To control the growing restlessness, the British passed the Rowlett Act in 1919. The act authorised the government to imprison any person without any trial or conviction in a court of law. Special courts would try people where there would be no provision for the right to appeal. This was an indirect contravention of the democratic principles and further aroused the anger of the masses, increasing the unrest in the country.